excited to my ghetto ass relatives, you know, thinking they was gonna be acting me intellectual shit like, girl, how was it working with Ice Cube and shit? My relatives had one fucking concern. Why you let that bitch hit you in the eye at the end of the goddamn movie? I say, cause they gave me a check, bitch, that's why. Well, you can take a punch with some zeros behind that motherfucker, okay? I was glad to play Trix, though. I enjoyed playing that bitch. You know why? Because Trix was an old bitch. She was a fat bitch, but she wasn't giving up her goddamn G-string. She didn't give no fuck, did she? She had confidence, ladies, the kind of confidence all of us need to possess because we be tripping about little shit that we should worry about. Is my stomach too big? Bitch, do your man like it? And if he don't find a motherfucker who like a big belly bitch, that's what you do. Shit. We tripping, but one thing we gotta remember, ladies, I don't give a fuck how fucked up you think you are, somebody wants your ass. Believe that. Yes, right, it's somebody for everybody, so if you buck too, bitch, relax. <laughs> Chill out, Bucky, baby. Cause somebody want a bunny, bitch, I'm sure of it. I bet you in this room right tonight, there's a man who want a bitch who, who don't want nothing less than a bitch who can bite an apple through a picket fence. I bet you I'm right. We up there worried. You know why we worried, ladies? Cause we looking in magazines, looking at them hoes on TV, believing that we gotta be like them. We believe shit they tell us too. They entertain us. That's all the fuck they do. I love TLC. But when they made no scrubs, we took that bullshit home with us, didn't we? Every time you see a man on the passenger side, the brother couldn't get no action from you. Y'all gonna fuck around and miss your man fucking with TLC. How you gonna take love advice from a bitch named Left Eye? You ask that hoe about a contact lens or something, that's what you... It ain't like she got a history of harmony her damn self, is it? Ain't that the bitch who burnt up her scrubs house? You don't ask her for shit. And TLC contradicting their own self. They talking that shit, I don't want no scrub. That's now, after the millions done rolled in. But if you remember correctly, when them hoes was bankrupt, they wasn't too proud to beg, was they? <laughs> Same with Destiny Child, little ass. They independent women now, ain't they? I depend the shoes on my feet, I bought them. You's a lie, bitch, Beyonce bought them motherfucker. You lie. Y'all gonna let them trick you, ladies, cause I'm telling you, when they trying to sell their product, they will fuck up your self-esteem. They will trick you. I looked at a commercial, a Jenny Craig commercial. The woman came out all disillusioned and distraught talking about, I knew it was time to take action because I woke up one morning and my daughter said, Mommy, you're fat. And I knew I had to do something. So I picked up that phone and I called Jenny Craig. You know, they flipped the screen, the bitch come back a few weeks later talking about, I lost 15 pounds on Jenny Craig and I feel great. I say, see, that is some bullshit. I could have did that commercial for you and show you how a real woman handled that bullshit. I done came out there all fucked up too, disillusioned going, I knew it was time to take action. Because I woke up one morning and my daughter said, Mommy, you're fat. And I knew I had to do something. So I picked up that phone and I knocked that little hole down the flight of stairs. That's what I did. beat that bitch like she was a rival gang member. Yes, I did. Yes, I did. I beat her. She ran. I beat her some more. I beat her so long, I lost 15 pounds, and I feel great. <laughs> Little crazy bitch. You know our children crazy now. You know that. I know why they crazy, too. It's them goddamn oodles of noodles. Think about it, when your ass was eating spam, you didn't act a damn fool like that. And I believe the parents eating that shit too. They be all on Sally, Jesse, Raphael, to my help my teen is out of control. That's some bullshit. I'd be on there too, talking about help. My teen is embedded in the concrete and I can't get this motherfucker back out. Help, 
My foot is stuck in my teen's ass and my shoes is new. Help! My teen ain't got no dinner plan and I done knocked that motherfucker's teeth out. I'll show him crazy, goddammit. I seen this lady on Sally Jesse Raphael. I swear, true story. This bitch on there crying because her 13 year old son wouldn't wear nothing but Tommy Hill figure clothing. The little bastard was on there dressed from head to toe in Tommy shit. He had on Tommy socks, Tommy drawers, Tommy watch, and this bitch is up there crying. Sally, I told him there's other children in the home and I'm working two jobs. And I'm like, wait a minute, this is some bullshit. Because if it was me, I'd be up there explaining the same problem. Sally, my team won't wear nothing less than Tommy Hill figure. I'd be up there explaining the situation. My little son be sitting up there butt-fucking naked on national TV. <laughs> Wondering why. I say, call Tommy. He'll figure it out for your little punk ass. Do that. <laughs> little crazy bastard. Quit eating them goddamn noodles. That's what you do. I suspect some of our entertainers is eating them oodles and noodles too, because some of them motherfuckers ain't wrapped too tight. I believe Whitney Houston is eating some oodles and noodles. But I think she sprinkled a little something, something on hers, don't she? <laughs> I'm not saying the crack rumors is true, but that bitch is walking and talking awful fast these days. You know? Bobby Chris, Bobby Chris, Bobby Christina, Bobby, Bobby, Bobby. she was eating noodles when I saw her on national TV proclaim her man Bobby Brown the original R&B King I said wait a minute this is some bullshit who the fuck she talking to is Bobby Womack in this motherfucker what how you gonna name Bobby Brown the original R&B King unless R&B is rocks and blunts then bitch maybe you You know somebody else I believe eat a noodle here and there? Erica Badu. I love Erica, but I know that bitch eat noodles and noodles. Why is she fucking with the bag lady? Bag lady, you gon' miss your bus. You can't hurry up. You got too much stuff. Now you know the bag lady ain't got change for the bus. Why you fucking with her? Even if she had it, she can't push a grocery cart up on the bus. Leave her the fuck alone, Erica. If I was a bag lady, I'd make a song and fuck with Erica. I'd call that rag lady. I'd talk about that turban on her head. I'd be like, rag lady, you gon' hurt your neck. Trying to wear them spreads like that. I guess nobody ever told you all those covers go to your bed. Your bed, not your head. <laughs> I love Erica and I love the message in that song, but she'll spook the fuck out you. You know, when people are super intelligent, they will scare the fuck out you when they got all, because she deep. The girl is deep. I went to see her at the House of Blues. She scared the fuck out of me. You know, she loved numbers. You know that. She named her son Seven. Now I'm thinking, what you call him for short? Six? Right now he a baby, so I guess he hey, tutu. <laughs> but she came on stage in the House of Blues. She got these lights down real low. It looks spooky as shit. She got this turban on and a coat, incense burning, candles lit. I didn't know if the bitch was going to sing a song or cast a spell. I swear to God, I didn't know. I said, don't look at her eyes. Just peek at her. Come on. It's amazing to me how we allow entertainers to be crazy and don't say shit about it. Because you know if Erica worked in the grocery store, you be pushing your cart going to bitch and frozen foods is crazier than a motherfucker. Go look at her. But peek at the bitch. Don't look at her now. I love to fuck with entertainers because a lot of them got those names that you just like to fuck with. Some of them live up to them, some of them don't, you know? Like Big Pun. That was a big man, big fine motherfucker. He was a big guy, so he lived up to his name. Lil' Kim, that's a little bitch. She about this tall. She lives up to her name. Foxy Brown, she just brown. I seen that little heifer up close, I said, who? I looked at that bitch left, right, upside. I ain't seen Foxy on her ass yet. And I love 
love the girl, don't get me wrong, but she just, how you gonna take a name that Pam Greer wore so well and put it on your ass and don't wear it right? You fucking up, Foxy. You know, she might look all right when she get a little older, but right now that little bitch got an acne problem. Oh yeah, she got more bumps than a pickle, I'm telling you now. I ain't saying you ain't Foxy Brown, but if you is, old Foxy needs some Oxy, bitch. That's... <laughs> Fellas, and I know y'all love her because she got the ill na-na. Y'all better quit fucking with that ill na-na. Y'all gonna get a sicky dicky. That's the thing now, you notice men go to strip clubs now. They like to go, especially all the entertainers, you know, they get all their money and they go to strip club and they pay all these girls for the money. Then they get on the record and holler about, I'm a pimp, I'm a player. No, motherfucker, you a trick? <laughs> See, a lot of men don't understand the difference. Let me tell you something, fellas. There's a few ways to tell if you a trick, okay? If every time you go see your girlfriend, you need change for a 10, you might be a trick. Okay, if your girlfriend's nickname is Hot Chocolate, Bubblicious, or Miss Good Head, you might be a trick. Okay, if every time y'all walking down the street, your girlfriend see a pole, she got a swing on that motherfucker, you might be a trick. Now, I could do this all day, but what I did is I wrote me a little song, because I got tired of these bastards falling in love with the dancers and swearing they got the woman of their dreams. So I wrote me a little song to help you understand exactly which side of the game you on. Come on, Chet, hit me with some music so I can explain my song. This is dedicated to all the women that stuck by the motherfuckers before they made money and then they went and married a bitch in a strip club. All right? I want y'all to clap your hands if you know what I'm talking about. Fellas, I want you to listen now. Pay attention. See, first of all, some of you so-called players need to hear this shit. So I'ma keep it real and say what's on my heart. If you gotta pay her for you hit it, you a trick. And you need to know this from the start. See, just think about players never pay for a relationship. Cause they got too much game. Just think about. What would it be if like you, they just paid a bitch? It would be insane if you got to pay her before you hit it. You ain't no damn player, you might as well quit it. Cause when you pay for coochie, that makes you a trick. Then you wanna get married, y'all just met last Saturday. Pimp don't have to pay up and they get their pick. And they know that sometimes those heifers get sick. So always wear a condom if you like your dick. Cause that shit's scary. Hit the rap one time. I said, what's going on? Why can't you see? Ain't no player gonna pay a hoe for nothing that's free. Now I done already told you can't take a hoe and make her your wife. But you done gave her the flavors all your life and I I don't know why. Now I don't understand how any man can be so confused if she work down at the club and tell you she love you. Don't be no fool. Hey, gotta get out of here, Connecticut. Thanks a lot, y'all.
Yes. How y'all feeling? Thank you, DJ. We up in this motherfucker tonight. Yes. How my sister's doing in the house? How the ladies doing tonight? Now, see, I give my ladies, I give y'all much love. Because, see, when I came out, I seen some of my sisters. They was partying with me. They was having a good time. Now, I noticed the men, they really wasn't impressed with the little dance and shit I was doing. They weren't really impressed. You know why? Because the video bitches got it all fucked up now. Men, they ain't happy unless you dropping it like it's hot, unless you backing that ass up. Now, I'm going to put the music back on, and I'm going to do a little dance to get the men excited. Watch what I tell you. DJ, do what I say. That's some bullshit. This is fucked up. This is some bullshit. And it's, it's sad that we have come to this. It's sad that we have come to this. But ladies, you know we all got our own little freaky moves and shit. We try this shit, whether it's in front of a whole lot of people or, by, or if we buy our motherfucking selves. But I want you to remember one fucking move. If you ever want to look like the stripper bitch in the video, you got to remember this one move because this is the official stripper bitch video move. When you backing that ass up, right when you drop it like it's hot, you got to turn back around and look at that motherfucker. DJ, hit it. That's right! That's how you do the shit the right way. Look at niggas, that's a bad motherfucker right there. She got that shit down like a motherfucker. These bitches make their asses clap like that. You know, just when you think you got all the Victoria's Secret shit you need, here they come making their asses clap. This is some bullshit. Boy, y'all better hope that I never wake up one morning and my ass is clapping. Because I'm going to be in every motherfucking video you see. They gonna, my, my ass gonna be so big, I'm gonna walk in the video ass first. They gonna say, here she come, here she come. I tell you, I praise for a big old ass. I want me a big ass. I want me an ass so big that when I'm walking through the club, a man could just take his drink and lay it up on my ass and I don't even know it's there. I'm just moving on through the club and shit. Knocking drinks off the tables and shit. Moving tablecloths over and shit. Want me a big old ignorant ass. Kind of ass you just look at and frown up. You'll be like, damn. I want an ass so big that if I'm on top, he roll me over, I'm still on top. You know, got a wrap around ass. And look at the white women. The white women looking at me like, well, why would you want a bigger ass? See, because, see, they don't understand that black men love big asses. They do. Black men love women with big asses. They do. Black men will give you fucked up advice on how to get a bigger ass. They will. Ask a black man, ask a white man first. Say, well, what should you do to get a bigger ass? White man will tell you, well, you need to do you some lunges, do you some squats, get on the Stairmaster for about 20 minutes a day. But you ask a black man's advice on how to get a bigger ass, a black man gonna tell you one thing, oh, I got something for that ass. I got something gonna swell that ass right on up. You know they think they dicks can cure anything. I got some for them bumps. Got some gonna take them bumps right on up. Oh, 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 for real. I'm, but you know what, though? I'm convinced that one day 
they gonna come out with a medicine to just make your ass swell up and clap like a motherfucker. I'm serious, because science is a motherfucker nowadays. They, you, do you realize that science and medicine have gotten together and created some beautiful, beautiful shit? Do you realize that they spend so much money on bullshit like Viagra and breast implants and they ignore important shit like Alzheimer's disease? Do you realize by the time we all get old, they do! Do you realize by the time we all get old, we gonna be walking around with big old dicks and big old titties and don't remember what to do with them? I know one motherfucker took some bootleg Viagra, everything swole up except his dick. <laughs> you know, cause you gotta be careful. Cause all that shit has a side effect. Remember that. And they always try to ease the side effects past you real quick. You'll see in the commercials, they'll come on the commercial talking about this sinus medicine. They'll make you think this medicine is a bad motherfucker. But right before the commercial goes off, here come the motherfucking side effects. Warning, this medicine is something to give you headaches, insomnia, and diarrhea. Now you got to decide whether you want to deal with a runny nose or a runny ass. Which one you going to deal with? But I kind of like that shit. I wish everything came with a motherfucking side effect warning label on it. Especially men. That's right. Let us know what the fuck your ass is all about right from the beginning. Imagine that shit. You in a club, you chilling. You looking good, he looking good. You checking him out, he checking you out. Right before he walk past you, you see his motherfucking side effects. Warning, this brother is subject to run up your credit, fuck about two or three of your girlfriends, and has a tendency to whoop a bitch ass every now and then. What you gonna do? You know I go ahead and fuck with the motherfucker if the dick is good, you know what I'm saying? Cause a nigga might change, nigga might change, nigga might change. Uh, I'm for real! Fuck that, I'm a drama motherfucker. I like niggas that take me through some bullshit. I do! I like the kind of nigga that spend a night over the house with you, you leave $20 on the nightstand, he steal the motherfucker and help you look for it in the morning and shit. I don't know, it was right here. Wasn't nobody here but me and you. Shit, I don't know what happened to the twins. I do, I like that type of shit. I'm a drama motherfucker. I am, I'm a drama mama. I love, I love drama, excitement, especially fights. Oh, that's just my shit. I love to see a motherfucker fight. I don't even break up fights at all. I be encouraging and instigating the motherfuckers. People be arguing this shit. I be the one in the background hollering out, that's some bullshit. <laughs> Trying to get the shit started. And it's easy to make women fight. All you gotta do is see two women arguing, wait like two seconds after they finish arguing, walk over to one of them and say some shit like this. That bitch could have never said that shit to me. They gonna fight! Yes, that's my shit. But I had a dream one time that I was standing in line at the gates of heaven and got into a motherfucking fight. Now they was fucking with me! Let me just explain this shit. I'm standing in line at the gates of heaven trying to get into heaven. Foxy Brown the rapper is standing in front of me. And Monica Lewinsky is standing in back of me. So Foxy Brown got up to the gate and I seen her pleading the case and shit. She was like, my name is Foxy Brown. I'm a rapper. I'm trying to get into the gates of heaven. I've done some sins in my life, but I'm still a good person. So St. Peter said, Foxy Brown, my child, what part of your body have you sinned with? She said, my hands. He said, go over there and rinse your hands out in the fountain and you may enter the gates of heaven. Next, it was my turn. I got up to the gate, I said, how you doing, St. Peter? My name is Samore. I'm a stand-up comedian. I've done some sins in my life, but I'm still a good person. He said, Samore, my child, what part of your body have you sinned with? Before I can say any fucking thing, Monica Lewinsky pushed me out the way. She
she said, excuse me, but can I rinse my mouth out in the faucet before this bitch put her ass in the water? I said, bitch, you don't know me like that. Fuck that. I'm for real. I try to keep it real with motherfuckers. Fuck that. I do. That's why all my friends, my friends, they love me. They call me all the time for advice and shit. Like Mary J. Blige. Called me back, no, back in November. Called me up on the phone. She said, Samoa, you know, I'm going to do a press release. I'm going to stop doing rap music. I'm going to go back to school and get my GED. I said, bitch, you done remade everybody's motherfucking songs. Why not just copy a motherfucker's diploma? Some other shit that I keep it real with. Some shit that I came to the realization of. Ever since I turned 30 years old, I decided that I ain't fucking with no more men over 35. I'm not, fuck it, I'm not. I'm sick of fucking niggas named Charlie and Rufus and Greg and M. I wanna fuck some Hakeems, some Deshaun's, some Twycons and some rations. I'm serious, because you take a big risk. You take a big risk fucking them older men. You ever see a motherfucker in some dress socks trying to get the pussy? He's slipping and sliding and shit. He fuck around and bust you in the lip. On a motherfucker with some Timberlands on, feet planted in the ground, and he wearing that ass out. Huh? That's what I'm talking about. Oh, for real? I mean, now don't get mad. See, I see the men over 35 getting mad. Don't get mad. Cause let me explain some shit to you. See, it's easy. It's easy when you fuck with the younger men. Let me tell you something. Bring them over to the house, right? Pull out your George Foreman grill. Put a little chicken breast on the grill. He gonna be all impressed with the lines on the chicken and shit. He gonna say, ooh, that's just like the restaurant. But you get you one of them men over 35, you got to make collard greens, potato salad, candy yams. You gotta fuck around and make a whole peach cobbler from scratch to impress his ass. Some bullshit. Then they be all judgmental and shit. Talking about why your rice sticking like that. Fuck that. Give me a young, I'm telling you with a young man, all you gotta do is get that motherfucker a Heineken, a Sega, and a Blunt. He gonna be like this, voila, voila. Now you might have to hide all your shit when you go to sleep. Wake up in all your, bl your beds, be on blocks and shit. But fuck that, the dick is important to me. Cause I think when you work real hard for your own money and you realize a motherfucker ain't gonna give you nothing, you realize this, fuck your bling bling nigga, can you sling sling? That's what I'm saying. Oh, and y'all don't know dick like I know dick. Dick is a beautiful thing. Do you realize that if a man is fucking you right, that you could spot his ass at the Million Man March? I'm telling you, that's the motherfucker right here. That's that mother. Come here, let's look at this motherfucker over here. Telling you, dick is a beautiful thing. Oh, and y'all don't know good dick like I know good dick. You know how you can tell you got a man with some good dick when you let him drive your car. And you know he ain't got no license. You 
you be like, go on, boo, fuck what the law say, nigga, you can drive, nigga. You know how you can tell if he got some good dick when you got a crush on him, but he got a restraining order on you. Oh, dick is a beautiful thing. And women, y'all getting the shit twisted now. What the fuck is all up with the tongue rings and shit? They claiming, oh, it makes dick sucking real good. That's bullshit. It ain't but two things that make a dick sucking better. That's extra spit and money. Fuck that. You working on the infection. That's what the fuck you working on. Dick is a beautiful thing. But don't fuck around and get digmatized. Oh, that's when the dick is so good that you can't see the reality of shit. A motherfucker that's digmatized be walking around saying shit like this. No, 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 no. He don't be hitting me. I be walking into the punches and shit. That's what I'm saying. I be walking into the punches. Don't be digmatized. And ladies, you got to always remember this. Keep your skills tight. Ladies, we all have skills within us that we have to keep tight. And when you was a little girl about eight years old, your mother gave you one essential toy. And she knew with this toy, as you got better with it, you would get a swivel in your hips and an attitude to match. Ladies, when you was about eight years old, your mother put you outside on the front porch and she gave you a motherfucking hula hoop. You didn't quite understand why she insisted that you learn how to do the hula hoop. You got out there with the hula hoop rocking around your waist. And at first it was a little bit difficult for you, but you kept on trying. Then after a while, when you got it rocking to your own certain pattern, it made a certain sound. It says, shk, shk. And when you heard that sound, you knew you was the shit. Then your girlfriend holler, put it around your neck. So I say to all my sisters here tonight in Hartford, Connecticut, the next time that you have to put your thing down on him, the next time that you have to remind him of just who you are, the next time that you have to practice your skills on him, the next time that you up on top and you riding him real good, you riding his dick so good that his toes is curling up, his eyes is rolling up in the back of his head, you riding his dick so good that he can't even close his mouth. I want y'all to do me one favor. I want you to look at yourself in the mirror, wink one eye at yourself, and just say, shh, shh. Y'all, my name is Samora. Y'all been wonderful. Thank y'all so much. your ass is about to ride. Oh my God. You need to catch your breath because this bitch gonna rock your ass tonight. Y'all see her every Monday night on UPN's number one show, The Parkers. The girl got her own clothing line. She got everything going on. I want y'all to keep the love going strong for my girl from Baltimore, Maryland, Monique. Y'all give it up for Monique. What's going on, Hartford, Connecticut? What's going on? Oh, God damn it, y'all can do better than that. God damn it, what's going on, Hartford, Connecticut? Woo! Baby, this is some 
wonderful shit to be out here in Hartford, Connecticut. But you know what? See, when I walk my fat ass out here, every fat bitch should have stood up on her fat ass feet and clapped her motherfucking ass. That's what the fuck should have happened. You fat bitches, fuck these skinny bitches. It's our motherfucking time to shine. Fuck you anorexic, bulimic motherfuckers. <laughs> fuck you skinny bitches. Big girls, it's our motherfucking time to shine. Shit. You skinny bitches. Look at them shaking, because you hungry, bitch. Get a motherfucking two-piece and a biscuit, bitch. You'll be all right. Big girls handle your shit. You skinny bitches, fuck ya. Fuck you, fuck you. I'm gonna tell you something. I'm gonna tell you something. Let me tell you something about you skinny bitches. Let me tell you something, big women. You know what, and it makes my heart feel good. You two big sisters, that's how the fuck it's supposed to be. Big people should only hang with two, uh, each other. You can't hang with a skinny bitch. I don't hang with skinny bitches. I don't play with skinny bitches. Cause a skinny bitch will try to fuck with your self-esteem. That bitch will try to make you do shit she know you can't do. Take you to the mall and walk real fast. Well go ahead then bitch. My chest hurts you smart motherfucker. I meet you back at the car and shit. Bring me a two-piece and a biscuit and a pretzel and a hot dog with everything and a Diet Dr. Pepper, bitch. You know I'm trying to work on my shit. <laughs> Big women, handle your shit. Handle your shit, you skinny bitches. Now, 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 what the fuck? You can't beat me. What the fuck? What the fuck you want to say to me? Y'all looking like you want to say something. I'll whip your motherfucking ass in this Civic Center. Big women, if you're sitting next to a skinny bitch, take your motherfucking fist and hit that bitch in the top of her head. Just let her know you're here. You skinny bitches are evil and you need to be destroyed. <laughs> Woo! Fuck y'all. It's our goddamn time, baby. It's, and you know what? I'm going to tell you something, big women. See, at one time, a skinny bitch was real confident with a shit. Real confident. Like, you know, we wasn't no fucking threat. You know what I'm saying? Like, we walk into the club, she be with her man, teasing us and shit. I look at that fat bitch. Go on, fat bitch. Go on, fat bitch. <laughs> Move. Go on, fat bitch. See, we went through all that old ignorant shit. But let me tell you something, you skinny bitches. Every man wants to fuck a fat bitch one time, baby. Once you go fat, you never go back. One motherfucking time. You skinny bitches, when you're fucking, you complain all the time. Oh, oh, my leg hurt, my kidney hurt. You on my neck, let me go. Big girl be like, nigga, what nigga? You ain't said nothing, nigga. You ain't said nothing, nigga. Pop! I got you, nigga. I got you, nigga. What nigga? What nigga? Stop crying, nigga. Stop crying, nigga. Stop crying. <laughs> Handle your shit, big women. Fuck what you heard, baby. Fuck. <laughs> Woo! Handle your shit, big girls. And big men, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something about your big fat asses. <laughs> Fuck these little muscle bound motherfuckers. Lifting all them weights and shit and got veins in their neck. They gonna fuck around and shrink their dicks up. Y'all stay big and fat. I just can't fuck with your fat ass. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Two fat motherfuckers cannot. Mm -mm. I have tried to fuck a fat man. It's too much work. Ooh, shit. Both of y'all laying there, you looking for his shit. He trying to find your shit. Y'all breathing and sweating. Oh, 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 nigga, fuck it. Let's go get something to eat, shit. <laughs> Woo! Big people. Oh, shit. <laughs> Sometimes I tickle my motherfucking self. <laughs> But you know what? I don't give a fuck what size y'all. I'm just proud to be a black ass woman. You hear what I'm saying? I am honored 
to be a motherfucking sister. See, black women, black women, we are some special creatures. And if you look around, every sister in here is gorgeous from the top of her motherfucking head to the bottom of her feet. We stay so beautiful and we age so gracefully. Because black women, we have a motto. We have a motto about life. Black women don't give a fuck. We 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 don't give a fuck. Girl, you going to work tomorrow? Girl, fuck that job. <laughs> Girl, how your kids doing? Girl, fuck them kids, yeah. Fuck that. And you know what the beauty of it is? Black men, y'all know that. Y'all know we don't give a fuck. So y'all know there's a fine line. You don't fuck with us, because we will fuck up your life. We don't give a fuck. Don't you start no shit, nigga, because I'm going to finish that motherfucker. Don't you bring no shit home and make me have to fuck you up. And see, sisters, it's a lot of white women in here. We can learn from our white sisters. We can learn from our white sisters. Because see, a white bitch knows when to shut the fuck up. She knows when an argument has come to a motherfucking end. Look, I want to keep my nice house and my pretty car and my fancy clothes. I'm going to shut the fuck up. Not our black ass. We don't give a fuck. We're going to get the last word on your ass. We can be in a motherfucking coma. We're going to say our shit. Look, bitch, don't you say nothing else. Mm -hmm. Fuck you, nigga, and your mother, too. Shit, I don't know who you think you're talking to. Fuck that. <laughs> See, little white couple have an argument in the morning time. She gonna stop that shit. She gonna say, hey, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Peter. <laughs> I wanna say, I wanna say that everything I, you know, was all my fault. And I'm sorry and I love you and see when you come home. Not our black ass. We don't give a fuck about James going to work. And see, brothers, y'all have a habit of starting shit in the morning time and leaving out like you didn't finish the motherfucking argument and it's over with. Oh no, nigga, it ain't over. I'm coming to your motherfucking job. Can I speak to James, please? James, bring your ass, nigga! <laughs> now see, now see, James then lost his motherfucking job because we'd have been up there six times in two days to tell this nigga what was on our mind. And he's sitting on the edge of the bed crying. And we're looking at him because we will not apologize. We don't give a fuck. We're looking at his ass. <laughs> you should have let me say what the fuck I had to say. <laughs> yes, baby. Black women ain't no joke, but see, I'm gonna tell you something. You see, white women, when y'all do get mad, y'all go too motherfucking far. See, we, we shows our ass. We'll call your mother a couple bitches and throw a rock through your window, but that's as far as we're gonna go without shit. A white bitch will cut your dick off. <laughs> see, and that's white women's shit. Black women, we know better. That dick is our support factor. That ain't going a motherfucking place. What the fuck was she thinking about? She cut that boy dick off and threw it upon the forest. What in the fuck was she thinking about? Black women, we got common sense. We don't give a fuck what that nigga did. My man could have whipped my ass and closed my right eye up. And I'm standing over his dick with the scissors, looking at it. Mm. Mm. And it's in the morning time. Oh, Lord Jesus! And he ain't peeing. You ain't beat me that bad, motherfucker. Just call me left eye, nigga, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> we handles our oh, shit. We handle Now, let me tell you something, sisters. Now, see, we got to stop buying other people's theories about how we don't need a man. Fuck that. Every black woman in here needs a motherfucking man by her side to make it. You can't make it without his black ass. I don't give a fuck how you dice it or how you slice it. And you stop trying to be the motherfucking man. You don't piss standing up. Sit your bitch ass down and know your motherfucking place. 
Y'all bitches kill me. I'm independent. That's why you brought your own motherfucking tickets here tonight with your independent ass. Know your fucking place. You hear what I'm saying? Yes, baby. And we start equating money with power. Yes, money does mean power, but not when it comes to your fucking relationship. I am married to what I think is the best motherfucker on the face of this earth, and I am the breadwinner. I make all the fucking money in my marriage, and my husband does not work because he can't read real well, but we working with that illiterate motherfucker. He be embarrassing me and shit in the restaurants, ordering shit he can't pronounce. Can I get a DAC Y? What the fuck is a DAC Y? You point to it, you ignorant bitch. <laughs> but I know my motherfucking place as his wife. You hear what I'm saying? And I give that nigga what he wants, when he wants it, and a bitch's own time when he say be there. Because I'm not losing his ass over some shit I would not do, especially when it comes to that bedroom. My husband calls me the FBIA, the freakiest bitch in America, because I will give it to his ass any kind of way he want it. And I'm going to tell you something, ladies. For all you crazy bitches sitting out there, when your man wants you to do some nasty, freaky shit, oh, no, I'm not going to do that. That's too nasty. That's too filthy. Well, what you won't do, another bitch will. And his ass ain't coming back home. So if your man wants you to do some nasty, freaky, gutter ball, pornographic, slutty, whole nasty bullshit, you better get with the motherfucking program. If that nigga wants to stick his dick in your ear, lend that nigga your ear. I hear you coming, nigga. I hear you coming. Handle your motherfucking shit, baby. <laughs> Handle your shit. Now some shit, some shit, and some shit, and some shit, it's not good, and it's not natural. And I don't know why, I don't know why, I don't know why you wanna do it. Let me, let me fuck your ass, mm -mm. Let me fuck you up in your ass. No, nigga, that is some horrible shit to fuck in the butt. That is some nasty, unnatural bullshit. And if there are any homosexuals in Hartford, Connecticut, God bless your nasty, faggot asses, because that is some painful shit to fuck in the butt. You nasty motherfuckers. <laughs> and every woman in here, every woman has tried that shit one time. And men, y'all ain't worth shit, because y'all be trying to coach us through that painful shit. All right, now look, look, look. I just want you to bend over, just bend over, and relax all your muscles. Okay, okay. Okay, okay! Oh, my eyebrows burning, motherfucker, take it out! I got some KY jelly. Put it on a biscuit, nigga, we we'll eat it, shit. That shit is painful. That is some painful shit. That is some painful shit. Whew. But I like it now. It's your breathing technique. sisters despite what you want to believe and this is for all the heterosexual brothers in here all the hardcore brothers in here just like he wants to fuck with your ass he wants you to trinkle with his ass le, 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 le. but he nervous because he don't know what you're gonna think about his ass when y'all wake up nigga you a faggy nigga you a faggy nigga i lick your ass nigga you a faggy nigga <laughs> and I'm going to tell you something. Every man, every man has a little bit of bitch in him, baby. Every man got a little bit of bitch in him. And I'm going to tell you how you bring the bitch out up. And then you got to be careful because if he ain't secure with his shit, he might fuck around and hit you in the mouth or something. I'd have been fucked up a few times. That's all right. But I'm going to tell you how you bring the bitch out up. Next time y'all in bed doing your shit. You're doing your shit.
<laughs> That's called the slow roll. That's how you slow roll his ass. Then you got to tell him, you got to tell him, come on, come on, baby, come on. I'm going to lay on your stomach. Then he's going to get a little nervous. Look, I ain't into that faggy bullshit. I don't play that punk shit. Oh, I just want to rub your neck. Stop tripping. <laughs> yeah, daddy, yeah, yeah, yeah. You like that, you like that. Then you got to kiss him gently on the neck. You got to break him down, you know, so he won't be so tense. Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now begin to work your way down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now when you get to the middle of his back, he going to tense up again and get real nervous. Look, I don't know where you're going with this punk bullshit. Don't get fucked up in here. Roll me back over now. I don't play that shit. Keep on going, ladies. Keep on going. Now, when you get to the crack of his ass, watch that nigga break. He gonna try to hold on to his manhood, but the bitch gonna slip right out of him. Give that nigga one good kiss on the crack of that ass and watch his ass break down. Look. Mm. Look. Connecticut, my name is Monique. God bless you, baby.